Hi, my name is Matt Hattel Masri, and today I'm going to introduce you to Xamarin Forms. What is Xamarin, first of all? Xamarin is an open source app platform from Microsoft for building modern and performant iOS and Android apps with C Sharp and .NET. This is an alternative to other platforms like, for example, Flutter or React Native, and there are others as well. But this is really for people who want to develop using C Sharp, and they want to develop applications for both Android and iOS. Xamarin is used by a number of large companies, and they include Alaska Airlines, UPS, Siemens, World Bank, Coca-Cola, DuPont, Fidelity Investments, Honeywell, and others. So what is Xamarin Forms? Xamarin Forms is part of the Xamarin family, and it is a library that enables you to build native apps for iOS, Android, and Windows using a single C-sharp code base. That really means that you have the same code that contains the business logic and even the UI, and that code is shared between your iOS and your Android app. This means that you maintain the code base and the UI in one place, and when you compile, that code base is shared between both iOS and Android. Your effort will be all in one place, and there won't be too much effort duplication. So Xamarin Forms uses XAML. And what is XAML? It is an XML way of describing the appearance of your application. And the behavior is in the code behind, and the code behind is the C-sharp that is associated with the XAML. What is the architecture? Well, Xamarin Forms is a combination of Xamarin Android and Xamarin iOS. If you want, you can build your Android app separately using Xamarin Android, and you can build your iOS app separately using Xamarin iOS. But if you use Xamarin Forms, it combines all of that together for you, and you don't have to worry. The only circumstance when you want to create apps separately for the different platforms is if you have something that is very, very exclusive to the operating system and something that is very native and it's not shared between iOS and Android. In those circumstances, you will not use Xamarin Forms. But in most of the cases, if you use Xamarin Forms, that UI and that business logic will seamlessly target both platforms. A question, do I need to know about Xamarin Android or Xamarin iOS? And the answer is not really, unless you want to do something native. All you do is build your app using Xamarin Forms, C Sharp, .NET. Magically, when you compile it and you deploy it, it works. What about the tooling? Well, if you're on a Windows machine, you can only develop apps for Android and Windows. And also, if you're on a Mac, you can build applications for both Android and iOS. You definitely need Visual Studio. Now, there are two flavors of Visual Studio, and both of them are part of the Community Edition. At the moment, the version of Visual Studio is Visual Studio 2019. The Community Edition is free of charge. For Windows, you will download the Visual Studio 2019. For the Mac, you download Visual Studio for Mac. I am on a Mac, so I'll be using Visual Studio for Mac. I'm going to start Visual Studio, and I will create a new app. You can create multi-platform, which is really Xamarin Forms. You can create an app only for iOS, for Android, for .NET Core, for the cloud, for tvOS, or others. I'm going to choose the multi-platform and choose app here. They give you a number of templates. And you can see here we've got Xamarin Forms. And you've got a blank forms app, a master detail, a tabbed form, a shell form. I'm going to choose master detail. So let's go next. It's going to ask you for the name of your app. And I will call it my first app. Here you can choose whether you want to target Android or iOS. In my case, I'm going to say both and the organization identifier, ca.methat, or whatever you want. You may want to have 
a mobile backend here. And this is if you want your application to talk to an API producer. In my case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to click on next. I will leave the project name as is. There are some other controls here that you can use if you want to create a Git repo and if you want to add a Git ignore. I'll just leave it as is and click on create. Now it's going to create for me the application. So here's my application. It comprises one solution which is called My First App and there are three projects here. The first one at the top there, this is the common code base and it consists of C sharp files and views. Now the main entry point is this app.xaml and the main page is main page. And you can see that the template that we chose is a master detail template. So the master goes into this XAML view and the detail is displayed by this XAML view. Let's collapse this and look at the other project. The other project is your Android project and your third project is your iOS project. So now you can see that the highlighted project is the Android project and that's because by default this is set as the startup project. Let me run this and see what it gives me. So I can click on run here and see what I get. And you can see that I've chosen the pixel emulator. And here's the emulator and it runs for me the application. And if I click on any of these master items, it goes to the detail and I can go back. So this gives you some sort of a hello world type master detail application. Now let's see what happens if we choose to run the iOS app. So I can come here and right click on the iOS project and say I want to start set this as the startup project. So with this as the startup project, you see here that it goes to iPhone. Let me stop the Android app and run the iPhone version of this application. And this is the iPhone emulator being started. And there you go. So you can have the same application running in iOS and Android. Let's look a little bit deeper at this application. I'm going to stop it and go, for example, into my views. And let's go into my main page and let's look at the XAML. XAML stands for extensible application markup language. And it's Microsoft's way of describing UI and presentation using XML. Now let's have a look at where this data is coming from. So in the application under services, there is this file called mock data store and they're basically just displaying some mock data. So you can see here that instead of first item, maybe let's make this vegetables. Let's make this bakery. Let's make this meats and so on. Let's leave it at that. And now if we run the application again, it should show us this data. And there you go. You see the vegetables, bakery, meats. Now this is mock-up data. In reality, this data would probably come from an API service. What's interesting to know here is that the code base is common to both Android and iOS. So the changes that we made here, they're in the code base, in the class library, and both applications, the Android and the iOS application, they are both using the same code base. So you have to put your business logic in one place and it would automatically make it available to both iOS and Android platforms. Thank you for coming this far in my video and I hope to see you again in other videos. Bye.